eventually. Um, Deputy Mayor, is there anything you wanted to add um, to that? And if you'd like to respond to anything that Michael has raised. Well, yes, I think I would like to say a few things in response to that. Um, obviously, my involvement in this dates from me becoming the Deputy Mayor last June, and so um, I didn't have real-time interaction with the sequence of events that Michael describes um, in 2017. Um, you know, some of the things that Michael has said, you know, I agree with. That uh, I understand that uh, he did ask at the November meeting of the SSHR panel um, for the fatigue audit, which was commissioned following this separate incident. So it wasn't um, an investigation into Sandy Lands itself, but was about fatigue management generally. That he asked for that report to be shared with the investigating bodies in November. That wasn't minuted, as Michael has said. I think we'd all agree um, it should have been minuted. Um, but as a result of that, it wasn't then on the live actions list for TfL officers to be checking off and making sure that they had complied with the actions in that meeting. When Michael quite rightly followed up on this um, in January again and said, has this fatigue audit been sent? It's my understanding um, that the then Director of Health and Safety, Jill Collis, said, I believe it has, but let me go back and check. Um, I think in hindsight, it probably would have been better if she'd said, I don't know, um, because when she went back to check, she discovered that the report hadn't been shared with the investigating authorities. As I understand it, she phoned you immediately at that point um, apologised uh, for that and said we will be sharing the report. That was then done. Um, when Michael asked further questions about the sequence of events, um, the Mayor at that May board meeting in 2018, which was a couple of weeks before I started in the role, but I was present, not as a board member, to observe proceedings, it was agreed um, that a report would be circulated to the board, which was published on the 24th of July, setting out a very clear series event, of events about what has happened and why. Um, as, a, as a normal matter of course, um, when audits are done, TfL wouldn't normally share those audits with investigating bodies automatically. Since this sequence of events procedures have been strengthened to ensure that if an audit has been conducted which has a material impact and could be of interest to investigating bodies, it is shared of a ma as a matter of course. Um, so, you know, I know that uh, Michael and others have called for an independent investigation into this, but having looked at a lot of the documents myself, as you would expect, speaking to senior members of staff at TfL about exactly what has happened, um, I am confident that a further independent investigation into this is not required. The report of the 24th of July 2018 um, that is easily available, if you put, um, you know, trams, fatigue audit into Google, it will be the first thing I can assure you that will come up. Um, and I think Transport for London has been fully transparent about what has happened here. Um, and so that's my understanding of, of what has gone on. Thank you. And Assembly Member Bacon wants to comment. Yes, thank you very much, Chair. I just wanted to check a couple of um, dates. So the, um, the uh, sorry, uh, Michael asked for the fatigue audit to be, well, the, the committee asked for it to be, uh, they asked the site of it in September. They eventually got it in November. Is that correct? That's what you said? Um, it was published in September. Yeah. Um, so there was, it was published, but it was published just after the SSHR meeting. Mm. Um, there's a sort of a strange thing happens when you're on the board of TfL, mm. that a lot of quite important reports get published just after board meetings. <laughs> um, so we had discussed it in September and all agreed that it was a key piece of evidence that would give insight into uh, okay. uh, and it was just important because, you know, we had, there'd been the Victoria Derbyshire programme, uh, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So we, there was a whole stream of fatigue-related uh, incidents. So we talked about fatigue at every uh, panel meeting, and clearly this was going to be a body of evidence that was absolutely critical for ourselves as okay. SSH, SSHR panel, but also for the investigations. Okay. To run through the other days, I've scribbled down while, while you were both um, speaking. It was in January that you saw the draft RAIB 
report, um, and it wasn't until February. Wait, so the, there's, the a, there's, a, there's an immediate share. RAIB report mm. yeah. which um, came out in November 2016, <coughs> so straight yeah. after the accident. Mm. The, uh, and then it was updated in February 2017. Interestingly mm. enough, the RAIB, those two very early RAIB reports don't mention fatigue at all. That's so, I mean, there's some odd stuff going on there as well. But, that, that's what uh, I'm but the, the final RAIB report that I think the first time I saw a full report would have been uh, December but we didn't manage to have an SSHR meeting because of scheduling and we didn't, to be honest, we didn't want to have an SSHR meeting around Christmas given that this was the second sure. Christmas that the victims would have not had their, okay. their family. I understand. Um, I'm a relative newbie but, to this committee so I'm not across the detail quite so much so bear with me, yeah. uh, both of you please. Um, so the REIB report didn't have reference to the fatigue report. Um, you picked it up, you approached the RAIB directly and said, have you seen this? And they hadn't. Um, I, I didn't th approach them directly. You didn't? Um, I, no, because I asked, in the SSHR, I asked management to confirm that it had been sent. Yeah. I believe somebody else had already asked them, okay. but there's a whole bunch of, there's a sort of blogosphere that's, that's okay. following this in great detail. So, the summary of what I've got is that there have been a succession of um, committee meetings that you, I think, have been chairing. Yep. Um, the issue of fatigue had been raised repeatedly. The RAIB report was published and didn't mention it and they clearly hadn't seen it. Um, the Deputy Mayor, when she was answering the question, said that uh, she gave an, a reason for that, which is that it hadn't been minuted at the meeting. Um, my understanding, and this is where I'm sketchy on the detail because I, I wasn't on the committee at the time, is that there were the primary suspicion of the cause of the accident was driver fatigue. It seems to me therefore, if I'm right about that, that it's absolutely incredible that the fatigue report that had been done would not have been forwarded to the people doing an investigation into this crash simply because it hadn't been minuted at a meeting. So technically, um, if you look at the RAIB report, and even when they updated it afterwards, they actually they said um, that uh, it was very interesting. Although they did not finger fatigue as a cause, they nevertheless made a recommendation for TOL and first group to improve their yeah. fatigue processes. Number 10, yeah. However, the SNC Lavalin report, which was undertaken for TFL, which frankly I think is the better report, um, <coughs> says that there are two root cause sort of chan two channels, causative channels. One is that the driver lost spatial awareness, and that the other was that the driver was incapacitated most likely through, um, you know, through incapacitated as in fell asleep. Um, so the SNC Lavalin does say uh, that it's one of two possible causes. And, you know, I, I mean, I, if I may, there's also, you know, if I, I also want to be able to come back on some of the, you know, some of the terminology used about the, um, you know, the board briefing. You, you say, you know, it was an explanation, it is a full explanation. It's not an explanation. Because, you know, the fact is we've had um, you know, the head of HSE who came to this panel in May who said, you know, the, the story has always been human error, human error, and now we know it's something to do with the minutes. First thing is, all of the action points relating to Sandylands in those minutes, uh, maybe not quite all, but the vast majority were not assigned to anybody from HSE. They were assigned to Leon Daniels. And we need to talk also about going on in parallel with this I was raising concerns very privately with the commissioner about conflict of interest of uh, senior executive in the line management of the tram being involved in the public relations, in the investigations, in the interaction with the investigating bodies. I didn't think that was appropriate and I raised it and it was dismissed uh, out of hand. So that person's getting the action points that we talk about is are being uh, rooted apparently, and we do not know because we haven't got access to the kind of um, secretariat notes following that meeting. We don't know who was taking action points and how they were divided up. So the line from um, the, so that we've had so far has been human error, which is not an explanation. Human error is a categorization. The report on the, 20, uh, the, the 24th of July 2018 <coughs> briefing that purported to explain this didn't actually say which human. And when the head of HSC came here in May to talk about this incident, she said something very interesting. She said, um, 
uh, in her, you know, sitting probably in this very chair, she said um, that IA, the, the responsibility to send out IA 17, 780 had fallen between people. Now, I'm sorry, but I think it's really important. It could not be more important to know which people, who was supposed to send it, particularly when there's this background of a board member, and by the way, not just me, other board members, uh, you know, we had a discussion about the propriety of the, 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 the handling of this potential conflict of interest. And in that situation, not to know which human was going to send it and what the other, you know, who thought who was going to send it. And there was, there is in that board briefing note, there's no evidence of any actual investigation. What we found out afterwards was that there were emails, there's an email from another senior executive at, at TfL asking general counsel whether he was choreographing the response. I mean, I don't think it's appropriate. I didn't spend all my time on that board going through that process and expect to have responses to me choreographed. I expected them to be investigated and answered <coughs> to them. And I, I mean, I'm sitting here still, two years later, two years after raising those concerns, I don't think we got the answers. I got a whole list of questions. I got 20 questions. And the questions are the same. We, get, we seem to be getting more, not less, when we see what happened between drafts of that report. Chair, um, some of this is going to be on the section that I'm going to take a bit later on. Okay. So for the sake of the integrity of the meeting, I think I'll probably pause at this point. Thank because you. some of that I think we'll pick up later. Great, thank you. Can I bit? just respond to this? Yep. Uh, uh, point that Michael makes about the word choreographing, which he has seen in an email. I think Michael has also seen um, the response that the General Counsel Howard Carter sent to that email. And what this relates to is the discussion that took place between TfL officers, John Fox, Howard Carter as General Counsel, before that report was published for the board because Michael had emailed and there was a discussion to make sure that comments were addressed in that board report, that that would then be cleared within TfL, that that report would be shown to me as the deputy chair of TfL, which is par for the course with board <coughs> papers that are published, um, and that would happen, that sort of administrative sequence of steps would happen prior to that report being published. So nobody should read any form of conspiracy into the use of that word in that email. And I am absolutely categorical and confident in that statement. 